everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel So Little Time and my name is Karen. Today's vlog is going to be a roundup of all my summer sewing makes and I've also got a long awaited giveaway that I've been promising you and there are four chances to win. So if you'd like to grab yourself a drink and then we'll get started. <laughs> doing really well thank you very much for joining me today if you are a new subscriber or somebody who has recently found my channel hello and welcome it's really nice to have you here with me what you'll get from me is thorough honest reviews of every single sewing pattern that I make and from time to time I will include my knitting makes and some charity upcycles so I hope you enjoy the content so I've got quite a lot to go through with you today I've got 10 sewing makes to share with you and then at the end of this video I'm going to be including a long awaited giveaway so I'm really really excited to finally be able to bring that to you so please do stick around for that if you watched my summer sewing plans video then you'll know that I set myself quite a challenge to get all of those sewing garments made up um, yeah there were 16 in total so I think I was a little bit optimistic and I haven't been able to make every single one of those unfortunately so I'm really sorry if there are any of those garments that you were hoping to see today in this makes video but some of them I will be rolling over into my autumn sewing plans so hopefully you might see them pop up so we'll get started then with what I am wearing and this is the Colette Manetta dress so I'll quickly just show you the pattern it's a jersey dress, suitable for beginner sewers, and you'll see there are three different style options on the front here, and I've gone with this option here. So I'll just pan you down so you can see the dress in a bit more detail. So yes, it's a jersey dress, and I have used this lovely cotton jersey from Sew Jasali. Um, it's a lovely weight, it's not too uh, lightweight, and it's not too thick. You will see that I have included a neckband on mine um, and I just like that a lot better. I'd rather have that than fold over and top stitch. It just fits a lot, a lot nicer on me. To do the neckband, all I do is measure the neckline measurement and then times that by 70% and then I add on 10 centimeters to that and that just makes the neckband the right length and it just sits nice and flat. And then I've just top stitched that with a zigzag stitch on my machine and I usually do that 2.5 by 2.5 stitch length and stitch width and that is just, it just is a nice sort of stitch. The Colette Manetta has a gathered waist you'll see here and that is gathered in with some clear elastic and this I had quite a lot of problems with so I have made this dress in the past and it is usually a quick and easy sew so I thought that was what this was going to be but unfortunately I did have quite a few issues with the waistline um, firstly I didn't have any clear elastic to hand and you do need a quarter of an inch clear elastic to be able to gather the skirt um, so I had some just standard elastic at that sort of width so I thought I would try that out first and unfortunately it just didn't work it was it was way too stretchy so the gathers just didn't work so I unpicked that then I ordered the clear elastic from Minerva and that got delivered and then obviously I tried to sew that up but for some reason I don't know why it would just not gather the skirt properly and I've had no problems with it doing that in the past, so I just do not understand why it wasn't working for me. Um, I think I um, tried to unpick it, but unpicking clear elastic is just near on impossible. So I ended up cutting a section of the top of the skirt off so I could then try again. And I, you get um, three metres in that um, little packet, and I used the whole three metres of the clear elastic to get the gathers right. And I still am not 100% happy with the gathers, so I'll just pan you back down again. You know, we have to point out the flaws. Um, so yeah, it's just not even. There's a, a section here that isn't really gathered, it's more gathered here, and it just goes like that all the way around my waist, basically. Um, I know it's not really something to get upset about or anything like that, um, but it just drove me crazy, because it should have been so straightforward, and unfortunately it wasn't. Um, and it's nothing against the pattern, it was just one of those days I was having, I suppose. So yeah, I will <laughs> try again on another time. Um, overall, I'm really, really happy with the dress. Um, I made the 
size small, um, which is for a bust of 35 to 36 inches, which I'm actually a 34, um, and the waist is for a 27 to 28, and mine is a 29 inch waist, and the hips are 37 to 38, and I'm a 41 inch hip. The thing is, this is a free flowing skirt, so you don't really have to worry about the hip measurement, um, and obviously you're bringing it in with elastic, so I suppose you could make it as tight or as loose as you like in that respect. Um, Yes, so I have made the size small, however, I have used 5 8 of an inch seam allowance down the sleeves, all the way down the sides, and even on the skirt as well. The only place where I have used the 3 8 of an inch, which you are supposed to use for this pattern, is around the waist. Um, now, because I had such issues with the waistline, I have done some top stitching around the waist, which you don't usually include. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but it's just around here. And that was purely so um, it held the overlocking stitches down. I didn't cut the seam allowance off too much because of the gathering. So I just, um, it just kept that flatter because I had a few areas where it was a little bit bumpy. So I am really pleased with the dress overall. I did put a photo of this up on my Instagram account stating how annoyed I was about it. And I had so many lovely comments. So if you were one of those people that commented on that photo, thank you so, so much. I really do appreciate the positive feedback. Um, you know, people basically saying, I wouldn't worry about it. You wouldn't notice unless you pointed it out. And that is true. And do you know what? I thought, well, the proof's in the pudding. We shall see if I pick this dress out of my wardrobe because I really was quite annoyed with it. Um, but in actual fact, I've worn it ever such a lot. It's really, really comfy. It's a great transition from summer into autumn. So I've been able to wear it as is like this when it's a little bit cooler. And when it has been a little bit more chilly on the morning, I've just put a denim jacket over the top of it or even my blackwood cardigan so yeah I'm really really happy with it so I'm just going to pan you down once more and I'll stand back just so you can see that it's knee length and I haven't taken any of the length I have just literally overlocked it and then stitched up the the hem by about half an inch and um, yeah and so the waist it's just on my natural waist, just about, I think. Um, in the past, I have made one out of French terry and that's been a little bit weightier, so the skirt has brought the waist down slightly. So yeah, quite pleased with that. And then it's elbow length sleeves and everywhere I have just top stitched with a zigzag stitch. And I really do like the colour of this fabric, actually. It looks a little bit more washed out on camera, but um, it's a lovely light pink with all these shoes on it. And I have to say, this has been quite a talking point at the dinner table with my children because they say, what's on your dress, mummy? And I said, oh, it's, um, it's shoes. And then my husband's like, no, it's not, it's eyes. <laughs> so they're like, which one's eyes? I said, it's not eyes, it's shoes. So they've been pointing out the shoes and then... One of my twins, he said, oh, well, one looks like bunny rabbit ears. And I suppose, oh, let's bring it down. These do a little bit here. Um, yeah, I don't know if you'll be going to, you know, I don't think you can see that. Okay, so I should go and get changed then into my next make. Okay, so my next pattern is the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes top. And I have just made the straightforward round neck with straight sleeves. And I have used this gorgeous fabric from Felicity Fabrics. It's a lovely cotton jersey with a paisley print all over it. Really, really pretty with lovely pinks and blues and yellows in it. So it goes with quite a lot of things in my wardrobe. Today I have paired it with my Tilly and the Buttons Miette skirt, which isn't a make from this summer. It's actually from last summer. Um, but I really do like this skirt. It gets a lot of wear. It's got lovely deep pockets. It's a wrap skirt with a big tie bow at the front. It's a double layered wrap, so there's no risk of flashing um, if you have a breezy day. And I just think it goes really nicely. Yeah, the Agnes top is a lovely top to make if you are new to sewing with jersey. Um, it was actually the first top that I ever made with jersey anyway, and I got on really well with it. Um, I have just top stitched around the neckline and on the bottom of the sleeves and the bottom of the hem with just a standard zigzag, 2 by 2.5 by 2.5 again. Um, and I just thought that that looked really nice. And then again, the neckline, I have used the same measurement that I did for the Colette Minetta and that is sitting nice and flat. It's just a lovely, comfortable sort of jersey top that goes with a lot of things in my wardrobe. So I wear it with jeans, skirts, 
pinafore dresses and that kind of thing. So yeah, that's all I've really got to say about this pattern. Um, so this fabric is now back in stock at Felicity Fabrics. So if you have been after it for a while and have found that it's been sold out, they have now got it back in stock. So quickly head on over before it runs out again. Okay, so now I will go and get changed into my next make. Okay, so my next make is the Jennifer Lauren Ivy Pinafore. And I've made this version here, which is more of a fitted silhouette. There is one that's a bit more free flowing. You may have already seen this. Uh, I have got a full review on this dress, which was part of the Felicity Fabrics blogger team that I'm on. So I have got a separate video for that and I'll link the card up above if you just wanted to hear more detail about it. Um, but yes, it's a lovely pinafore dress. I'll just pan you down so you can see. Um, and it's got a lovely yoke section around the top and these are functional snaps that I've put on there. Um, I really do like those. These are ones that my friend actually gave to me. They're slightly different. They have, um, you know, where you can see the fabric in the middle. So they're just, they're not plastic. They're like metal ones, ones that I've not used before, but you can use your vario pliers with these. Um, it's got a lovely fitted sort of area around the bust, which has got bust darts. So it is really good for wearing with tops like this. And also you can wear it without a top on underneath. And I have found that I did that throughout the whole of the summer, wore it just on its own and it was lovely and cool to wear. I used this gorgeous fabric from Felicity Fabrics again, as this was um, in return for a blog post. So this was gifted to me and it's a lovely soft uh, baby needle cord, fine needle cord, and it's got these lovely glittery stars all over it. And when I am out in the sunshine, they really do glitter really nicely. So I'll stand back a bit further. You can see it's a lovely A-line shape, which really does suit my shape really nicely as I'm a classic pair. Um, it is fully lined as well. So I'll just give you a quick peek of that without flashing. So there's the lining there. Um, and that is free flowing. It's I've not like basted it on or anything like that. It's Fully lined properly. Um, at the back there is um, the yoke there as well and I did have to put that in two pieces unfortunately um, as I ran out of fabric because I made this dress twice. <laughs> the first time I made it too small and if you watch my video like I said you will hear more about my saga of making this dress up but I absolutely love this dress. I have worn it so much during the summer. It's just a really nice fit. It's got a curved um, back back panel there um, so if you have a sway back I think it would be really good for you because it does go in like that so it just fits to your body curves really nicely um, so that fits nicely around there. There is a front seam down the front I don't know if you can see that um, which is usually created by a flat fell seam. Now I did a faux flat fell seam for this one just because for this fabric it just seemed to work a lot better. Um, and then at the back you don't use a flat fell seam at all, it's just a standard seam um, that you sew together on your overlocker or with your standard sewing machine. So yes, this is a lovely, lovely dress, really comfortable to wear I have to say. Um, now I went with the size 10 in the end um, and that is for a bust of 35 inches, a waist of 28 inches and a hip of 39 inches. Now I am probably falling in the um, size 12 but there is there a bit more room in the finished garment measurements so that is what I went off. Um, yeah so like I say really really lovely dress, really happy with it, I've worn it so so much and I just love 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 this fabric and I think it goes really nice with my Agnes top as well so that is what I've paired this with um, so I haven't really got anything else to go with this dress other than that so it picks out the blue. Okay so that's this one then I shall go and get changed into my next make. Okay so the next pattern that I have made is New Look K6434 and this is the version that I have made here and I've made it in this this lovely green fabric that I was kindly gifted to from my friend who lives down the road. She gave me a bag of fabric and this just happened to be included in it. It's a lovely lightweight cotton um, and it's just so suitable for this top. I absolutely love these sleeves. I did think that these were going to be slightly longer um, but I'm actually quite happy with where they are sitting. Um, yeah, and it's just a lovely lightweight top. I've tucked it into um, my Camden skirt by Nina Lee. And I'll link a card up above for the full review on this skirt as well, which I did in collaboration with Josie from It Is Josie. Um, yeah, lovely fitting skirt, but this, this top just seems to go really, really well with it. I'll stand back so you can see. Um, 
and I didn't think this kind of style top would really suit me um, as I don't work it, it you know it's something you could wear to work but actually I do find that I have been wearing it ever such a lot with this skirt um, I made the size 12 which is for a bust of 34 so that's perfect for my bust um, a waist of 26 and a half which is tiny in comparison to what I am and hips of 36 again tiny for what I am but what I did do was make a very slight alteration to the width at the bottom so if I pull this out you will see the length that it will fall on me if I wear it with jeans um, and I really do like how it looks when it's not tucked in as well so I just a-lined this section here very slightly because obviously my hips are a lot wider than anywhere else on my body and the hip measurement on this was quite small for the size 12 and um, I just went out just very slightly and um, yeah and that has worked on the back of this pattern if I can show you the line drawings you'll see that there is actually a small closure at the top but I've not included that so I have literally taken that seam allowance out of the back piece and I have put that on the fold and just yeah have it so I just put it on and off over my head and that has worked absolutely fine it fits really nicely against the back of my neck I'll bring you back up so you can see my lovely face <laughs> um, yeah and it fits really nicely around the neckline as well and I have just used some shop bought bias binding just to finish that neckline off and that is absolutely fine. I do keep pulling it down because I've got the wrong shaped bra on today. I've got a balconette bra so it doesn't quite work uh, with this. Yeah, it just tends to reeve up too much like a shelf. <laughs> so when I wear it with a, a normal bra, it's absolutely fine. But I'm really, really pleased with how this top turned out. I did make it as part of the hashtag sew a top challenge that was organized and hosted by Claire from Penguin and Pear. That has now been completed, so there is a playlist on her channel and she has done a roundup video just recently as well, so I'll pop that in the description box below for you if you want to check it out. And if you want a full review of this top, then I'll link a card up above again for this as I did a full review on it. But yes, I really, really like it. Love this fabric, love the feel of it, and I actually do really like the colour on me as well. Okay, so I shall get changed into my next make. So my next make is McCall's M7061 and this is the pattern here. It's sort of a loungewear slash pyjama set pattern and I've opted to make this version here which has got a kangaroo pocket on the front, a sort of curved hem and a really big hood. And I'm absolutely over the moon with this make. It was such a quick and easy sew. I did it again in one evening which was really satisfying. The fabric I've chosen to use is a fleece fabric, which I've picked up off eBay. It was just a one-time purchase, wasn't off a shop or anything like that. Um, I was looking for something that had quite a nice print, as you don't really find that many nice fleece fabrics out there. Um, yeah, and I'm over the moon with this. Now, the size that I have made is a size medium, which is for a UK 12 to 14. Um, now, I went with the finished garment measurements especially for my hips. So I have a 41 inch hip. So the measurement at the hip line when finished is 41 and a half and it just fits just right because obviously this will have a slight bit of negative easing. You can sort of go a bit smaller. So if I'd have gone with my proper hip measurement, I probably should have been doing the large, but I think that would have been too baggy everywhere else as I really do like the fit of this. Um, so this fleece doesn't have lots of stretch like a cotton jersey would or a sweatshirt fabric um, which you can use for this pattern so I think that would work really well for this. Um, it is super snugly warm so it's going to be great for those chillier evenings that are you know, going to be coming our way very soon. Um, so I'll just pop the pattern down so you can see in full it's got an absolutely massive hood. So let me just tuck my hair in and I'm going to show you how big this hood is. It's just humongous. I mean, yes, really, really big, <laughs> you know. But um, I suppose it's better to have a big hood than one that's too small. And you know, if you are really sat there quite chilly one evening, you could, yeah, put it, put it over your head um, and stuff. So let me pan you down so I can show you the full. So it's got a kangaroo pun. Uh, kangaroo pouch on the front and you put that on first before you sew the rest of the garment up and um, let's move my hair out of the way and then yeah it's just nice fitted nicely um, down there and you can see it's got the curved the curved hem and I really do like how that is fitting uh, yeah really really comfortable 
really, really soft and very, very snuggly. Um, yeah, really happy with this, as I keep saying. I just really, really like how it fits, um, how it came together. It was so, so quick to sew. Uh, really easy to put the hood in as well. The only thing I will say with the pattern is that when they tell you to insert the sleeves, you will have already have sewn up the side seams of the dress. Now, usually when I make a jersey pattern, I put the sleeves in on the flat before you sew the side seams up. And I just didn't even think about it. I was just following the instructions step by instruction, step by step, as I was going along. And then when I got to the point of putting the sleeves in, I was like, oh yes, I've already, you know, sewn the side seams up and I'd overlocked them as well. So there wasn't any way of unpicking it to then insert the sleeves on the flat. So then what you do is sew up the side seams of the sleeves and then insert them as you would a woven. Now I didn't have to do any gathering stitches to obviously fit it into the sleeve head, but I did have to stretch certain bits of the fabric to get it to fit right and because there isn't a lot of stretch in fleece fabric that was quite difficult in some areas. What I did do as well was because this fabric is quite thick I basted it on my sewing machine first before putting it through my overlocker just because I didn't know if my overlocker would cope with the thickness of some of the bulk of the seams. Um, but it, it worked fine the way I did it and I'm really really happy with this make so yeah I'm looking forward to wearing this on those chillier evenings with a, a nice you know hot chocolate or something or even a, a mulled wine when we do get to that kind of year um, time of year yeah so thumbs up for this one I should go and get changed into my next make so I'm actually wearing my next two patterns for you. I haven't got the patterns here to show you, unfortunately, because they're PDF patterns. So what I'll do is insert them on the screen. So firstly, I've made the Angie top by Bobbins and Buttons, and I've paired it with the True Bias Hudson pants. So I'm gonna insert those PDF pictures right now for you. Okay, so we'll firstly start off with the Angie top then. It's very, very similar to the Tilling the Buttons Agnes top, but it does have a slightly more relaxed fit, which is really, really comfortable. Um, it comes with a scoop neck, which I have gone for, and it also has the option of having a crew neck. Um, but I think the scoop neck just suits me a little bit more because my head's quite small. It elongates my neck. Um, I've gone for three quarter length sleeves on it. And I've made it out of a gorgeous French terry fabric, which is also from Bobbins and Buttons. And I've not seen this sort of print before. It is really quite something different. And it's a lovely sort of gray green background with these lovely white florals and there's some birds and things on it. And then I've just paired it with um, a lovely light pink ribbing. So I just thought that contrast did really well and just brought out a bit of colour really um, and like I say I've paired it with the True Bias Hudson pants as a loungewear set so I've used the contrast ribbing on the waistband and on the pocket accents and also on the bottom of the cuffs as well just down here and I really like how this set has turned out so I've actually shortened the top of the Angie top um, by about I think it was two inches I took off just because I wanted it shorter to show the waistband of the Hudson pants because otherwise it was just too grey like this um, and I just wanted to be able to have that little peep of pink coming out. I'm really really happy with how the set has turned out. There will be a full review on this um, as it's actually for my next blog post for Bobbins and Buttons so I'm going to be doing a separate video about this but I thought I'd include it in my makes as I have done it this summer. The True Bias Hudsons are supposed to be a close fitting pant, but I have found that these are slightly baggy around my knees, especially at the back um, and on the calf as well. There's quite a lot of excess fabric. So next time I will size down. Um, yeah, you go with your hip measurement to get the accurate measure, uh, size to choose, but I think with it being a stretch fabric, you can get away with going down a size. So I made the size um, 10 so I will be sizing down to the 8 and for this I also sized up because it was a French terry fabric we weren't sure if it would um, work as a French terry but it actually fits perfectly um, but I made I did go up a size so I've gone up to a size 12 but I found that it was it was too big when I tried it on so I have used 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance down the side seams um, and the sleeve seams 
so it is a bit of a closer fit. It is more of a looser fit, like I say, so it is still quite relaxed on me, which is really nice and comfortable. So it is really nice to have a loungewear set now because I did Me Made May earlier this year, so I did a roundup video of that. So again, if you've not watched that, I'll link that up above. Um, and that showed where there were gaps in my wardrobe and I was definitely missing a loungewear set. So I'm really, really pleased that I now have one. So if I'm not feeling very well or I just want to lounge about and slouch about the house, I've now got this outfit and I've also got that fleecy uh, dress as well. So I'm really glad that I managed to do that. I will be making more of these uh, True Bias Hudsons. Again, like I say, I'll size down, especially if I use a standard cotton jersey because that will have more stretch than a French terry. But this um, actually ended up having more stretch than I thought initially because when I received it, I had three meters and it didn't seem like there was a lot of stretch in it when I first sort of, you know, tested it. But then as I was sewing it up, I thought, gosh, it actually it's more stretchy than I thought. So yes, I'm really, really pleased with this. So I hope you like my loungewear set. I've just got a few more makes to show you. So we are getting to the end of this video. So I'll go and get changed into my next make. Okay, so my next make is the Tilly the Buttons Indigo dress. So this is the tunic version on the front of the cover here. On the line drawings you see there is a dress version. And there is lots and lots of options for this. So you can have a gathered waist. You can have a gathered waist with the exposed ruffle. You can have straight sleeves. You can have um, a ruffle sleeve and also an exposed ruffle sleeve. Um, so I opted to go for the dress with the exposed ruffle waist and bracelet length straight sleeves um, because I thought this fabric was quite busy so I didn't really want the extra flounce on the sleeves but that is a version that I really would like to try out in the future. So the fabric that I've used I picked up from John Lewis about three years ago so I've had it sat in my stash for quite a while. I also had this pattern cut out for ever such a long time so I really did need to crack on with making it and I'm so so glad that I have made it because I absolutely love, love, love this dress so much. I'm definitely going to be making lots, lots more. As soon as I saw the pattern when it came out, I thought, yeah, that's right up my street, a really girly, floaty dress. However, I have added waist ties to bring it in at the waist because I knew with it being quite a free-flowing dress, it probably wouldn't suit my body shape because I am more of a small area around my waist. Um, so I have added the ties and that was really, really easy to do. Um, I did add the ties after I'd already sewn the, the side seams up, so I did have to open it back up again to insert them in, but it, it wasn't a problem um, because I wanted to try it on first without the ties uh, to see how I felt in it. But yeah, it was just a little bit too loose. So I will pan you down. So yes, here is the ruffle. I'm going to pan you down a bit more um, here probably can't see it because the fabric is so busy but there is a little ruffle around the waist area there and I really really like that it's so so pretty and it looks like it's really hard to do but actually it was very straightforward um, you know my sewing isn't amazing on this section here but as it's a blue fabric and it's very busy you can't really tell so I'm, I'm fine with that I've just gone with the bracelet length sleeves um, and they do just come sort of just to there um, and I really like that the Sleeve heads are sitting perfectly on my shoulders. I've made a size three, so I have sized down, like I say, for Tilly's woven patterns, if they've got a lot of ease, I always size down. It's got this lovely floaty skirt, and that just comes to knee length, which is just a lovely length on me. I have brought it in with those waist ties, so there's my ties there, brought it in. Um, and I ha it hasn't got any closures on the front or on the back and it fits just absolutely perfect and getting it on and off is no problem at all for me because there is no stretch in this fabric whatsoever but I absolutely love this dress on me. I love the colours, um, I love the shape, I just love how it makes me feel and I have to tell you a funny little story actually. Um, our car was due to go in for its service and it's not too far to go so I actually took the car to the, the garage in the morning and then ran back home and then had a shower and got dressed into this dress. So when it was ready to go and pick it up, it had turned quite a warm afternoon. So I didn't want to um, get changed out of this dress. I really enjoyed wearing it, even though it was quite a warm day. And because it was really sunny, I decided to walk along the road <laughs> with my sunglasses on and a parasol <laughs> to protect me from the sun. And I did feel... <laughs> 
a bit of an idiot, but also I felt, you know, quite elegant as well in this lovely floral dress and the wind was, you know, blowing the, the skirt. And then when I was sat at the garage, obviously you have to go in and wear a face mask. So I'm just going to grab the face mask that I wore. And it was this one here which is made with some fabric um, that I used for a dress in the past and I've just added these um, spotty sections. So I had this on with this dress, um, which obviously looks like I've made it to go with it, but I didn't, it was just what I had in my purse. Um, so when I got to the garage, I popped this on and then they, they sat me down and I had to wait for quite a while. I don't know if I was early or something, but then when they called me over to say that the, um, the car was now ready to take home, uh, the lady came up to me and said, oh, I have to say, I really, really love your dress. And she said also as well, my, my manager has been admiring you <laughs> from over the room, saying he couldn't stop looking at me because I'd coordinated my mask with my dress. And he said, you know, it was, he just thought it was really quite something. And of course, you know, we all have this when people say, oh, I really like your dress. You know, do you turn around and say, oh, thank you, I made it. Well, I usually don't, unless somebody says to me, where did you get your dress from? Then I'll say, oh, I, I actually made it. I didn't buy it, you know. But I don't usually say I made it if somebody just says, oh, I like your dress. I just say, oh, thanks very much, and that's it. But then because they'd actually made the effort to come over and compliment me and, and that kind of thing, I said, oh, yeah, I made my mask. I said, but I didn't make it to go with my dress, but I did make my dress as well. So they were like, oh, this is amazing. And, you know, <laughs> you don't expect that at a car dealership. It was just hilarious. But I felt really just lovely afterwards. So, yeah, just thought I'd share that. <laughs> that with you but yes I absolutely love this dress and I loved wearing it on that little walk down to the uh, the garage um I've worn it ever such a lot actually and it is quite a dressy dress I have to say and I think it is because of this fabric but yes I will definitely just wear it on the school run and I have done um you know now that the children are back at school oh it's so nice to have them back at school I have to say I had mixed emotions of them going back because I, I do miss them, having them at home for all that time, but I think they needed to go back as much as I needed them to go back because they were starting to get bored and didn't really know what to do. And, you know, they'd say, I don't know what to do. And anything I suggested, they didn't want to do. Um, but I, I am missing having that quality time with them where we went out for walks and picnics and things on, you know, just on our own. Um, yeah, but they are absolutely loving school. So it's, my twins have literally just started full time this week. They only did afternoons last week. And in, in the even like last week in the morning, they were saying, when's it time to get dressed? Can we go now? Is it time to go now? So they were eager to get there. They really, really are enjoying it. And I'm so happy that they've all settled in really well. And Harry's just gone back to it like a duck to water, you know, so, but he's having weekly homework now. So that's, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Um, anyway, so I've got two more things to show you. This was the last make for me. So I'll just grab the last two things. So luckily, we um, were able to go on holiday this year. We weren't really sure if we were going to go. We had it booked from literally back end of last year, um, just to Cornwall in the UK. But if you know Cornwall, it is absolutely beautiful part of the country. Um, and if you get the weather, you can't beat it. The scenery is amazing. The sea is amazing. The beaches are amazing, you know. Um, and luckily, we were able to go on our two-week holiday to Cornwall. And we booked a cottage um, in a little fishing village called Mullion Cove um, and it's really really pretty and the beach was literally a 20 minute walk away and it's not a beach that has facilities or a car park so it wasn't um, you know well used so we were able to social distance really well throughout the whole of the holiday and we didn't really use the car all that much so it actually felt like we were there for a lot longer than we were and it was a break that we needed more than we thought as well so we got told the week before that we could go and then Leicester went into lockdown and we were like, oh no, you know, can we go? Because we were just outside the border of the line of which was in lockdown. So I was really honest with the company and said, you know, we're in Leicester, but we're not in the bubble of lockdown. Are we still okay to travel? And they said, if you're legally still to travel, we're happy to have you. And I'm so glad that we were able to go, you know, because we were in two minds of cancelling it our, ourselves at one point and losing all our money which wouldn't have been ideal. But yes, anyway, I do digress. Um, the reason I'm telling you is that I actually made two t-shirts for my twins, um, one each for them, and I was gonna make one for Harry, but again, I ran out of time. So um, this was a pattern test for bobbins and buttons, um, and it's a lovely, just standard t-shirt. And I used this really cute fabric, um, cotton jersey again, which I got from Rosie, from Rosie Sews Modern Vintage, her d -stash account on Instagram. I do use her quite regularly. She has some nice things on there. Um, and then I also made another one 
in exactly the same fabric but this time what I did with this one was just use some navy pontaroma that I had in my stash for the neckband and just use the same fabric throughout for the rest of it and then on this one I did a ribbed um, neckband which was actually from the dragon costume that I made my eldest son and again the blue pontaroma for the sleeves just so they're the same but not if you know what I mean so they're just contrasting because I don't dress my twins exactly the same they always have like contrasting things um, and they like to know whose is whose they've got to that age where that's mine and that's yours you know so they they don't want to wear the same things so even their shorts they they don't wear you know they know whose is whose <laughs> even if I don't sometimes they've actually got a couple of blankets which um somebody crocheted for me when I had them and I didn't realize they had different colored edging and I put them on the wrong beds and then they said that's not mine that's that's Thomas's and that's James's and I said how do you know because it's mine's multicolored around the edge I said oh, all right then <laughs> so now I know but yes yeah, so these are the Lee t-shirts by Bobbins and Buttons and they have literally just been released um, they've worn these ever such a lot so I'm going to insert a couple of photos so you can see them uh, wearing them So the fabric has washed out significantly because like I say, they have washed, uh, worn them so, so much. So we took those on holiday with us. So that was why I was, yeah, been on about my holiday. But yeah, it was really nice to, to be able to get away. So that is all my sewing makes. So now we shall get on to the, um, the giveaway, finally. Okay, so for my subscriber giveaway, initially I was doing it for when I reached 2,000 subscribers, which was at the beginning of this year. So um, I did show you actually what I was going to be giving away, and that was the pattern weights that I made with Fimo clay um, myself. And they're just in the form of like a cupcake with these little sprinkles on the top. Um, and I made those with Fimo clay, like I said, out of a set of six pastel clay blocks, um, and you get eight out of those. So I've got a set of eight here to give away, all in different colours. Um, so that's going to be the first prize for my 2,000 subscriber giveaway. Um, and then recently I have just reached over 3,000 subscribers. So firstly just want to say thank you very much to everybody who has subscribed, um, who likes my videos, comments, watches, you know, it really does mean a lot to me. I really, really enjoy bringing my videos to you and without you I wouldn't continue. So. Um, I'm now going to show you what the other prizes are. So there are four uh, chances to win. So that's the first one. And then the second, uh, third and fourth are some Tilly in the Buttons patterns. Now I put a poll out on my community tab recently to see out of certain patterns which would be the most popular. So I chose with the most popular voted ones. So I'm really sorry if this isn't one that you voted for, um, but I just went with the majority votes, um, obviously. So firstly, there is up for grabs, the Tilly in the Buttons Agnes top, as you saw me wearing earlier. Um, and then next, there is the Tilly in the Buttons Jessa trousers and shorts pattern. Now I've purchased this for myself as well, as I would really like to make the shorts. Um, not so sure about the flared trousers. Um, and then the next one is the Tilly in the Buttons Rosa shirt and shirt dress. Now you saw that I made this recently as well. It's a really lovely pattern. So those are up for grabs. So there's four chances to win. And this is open internationally. I'm happy to post internationally. Now I did wait obviously for this giveaway to go live now uh, because of the lockdown situation that we had. The post wasn't up to scratch um, and I was worried that things weren't going to be able to get to you. So hopefully now the post should have resumed its normal service ish um, so hopefully all being well you will receive these so to enter I don't really want you to do anything major um, just need to get your names put down in a hat basically so what I'd like to do is pop in the description box um, your name and how you came across my channel how you found me um, I'm just interested to see how people have come across my channel before um, and you know what you think to my channel and that kind of thing I'm just yeah, really interested in that really. I'd love to reach more people because I love inspiring other people with their sewing. You know, because likewise as a viewer, I take inspiration from lots of other sewing bloggers myself. So yeah, that's all I really want you to do. And if you don't already, please do follow me on Instagram. My makes do pop up on there 
uh, before they sort of arrive on my YouTube channel. So, like I said, the boys are now all at school, so I hopefully will have a little bit more time to do some vlogging. Um, and I have set up a Ko-Fi page just so you can contribute to um, my channel if you'd like by buying me a virtual coffee and that's just going to help with purchasing decent equipment for um, doing future vlogs, sew along styles and that kind of thing. So I have bought a ring light, so thank you to everybody who has recently given me a, a virtual coffee, you know, contributed to my Ko-Fi page, I really do appreciate it. So I have bought a ring light for when it comes to the evenings and that kind of thing, I can have a light behind the camera so you can see me, because at the minute it would be impossible. Um, yeah, and I will in the future hopefully buy a camera, but obviously that's a little bit more expensive, so it's way out of my league at the moment. Um, yeah, so I think that's everything. So yeah, please do enter the giveaway. Hope you liked all the makes that I made today. Um, my next few vlogs, I'm gonna be doing a face mask tutorial and also a face mask holder made out of fabric, which is for those um, disposable type face masks if you wanted to keep it clean in your handbag. I'm gonna be doing that and that pattern has been provided by a very good friend of mine in the sewing community. So I will credit her when I do that um, tutorial and then I will be bringing obviously my loungewear set blogger review um, and then my next one will be my autumn sewing plans so please do check out my future vlogs and if you've not check out my past ones as well that would be great so thank you ever so much for sticking with me throughout this whole video if you have actually in the end got to the end um, and I shall see you again very soon thank you bye